Long before satellites and Doppler radar, people relied on weather vanes for storm tracking. A folk art figure balanced on an axis turns with the wind to indicate both direction and speed. Though more ornamental than practical, it's still a great way to find out what's in the wind weather-wise. As it swings with prevailing winds, a weather vane offers important clues. Northeast winds, for example, could mean a storm is brewing. Learn to read the signs and a weather vane offers up-to-the-minute weather information. To make a weather vane the old-fashioned way, a craftsman starts with a sheet of soft copper. It can be easily cut, bent, and shaped. Using electric shears, he slices the copper to the appropriate size. Then he clamps it to a steel mold of a rooster body and head. With a rubber mallet, he carefully pounds the copper into the crevices of the mold. This is a critical first shaping of the copper, and he has to hit it with just the right amount of force. If he's too heavy-handed, he could break or tear the copper. Too little force, and the shape won't properly transfer to the metal. With the basic rooster shape now established, he reaches for an air hammer that's equipped with a plastic tip. It beats the copper into the mold thousands of times per minute. This transfers finer details, like feathers. And with its smooth plastic tip, the air hammer inflicts no damage. It takes less than 20 minutes, and the rooster comes to life in copper. He unlocks the clamps and removes the molded copper rooster. He'll make another one just like it for the other side of the weather vane. This will distribute its weight correctly and make it look good from all angles. He then pounds copper into the shape of the rooster's tail. It has generous plumage for just the right balance. With a bandsaw, he slices around the molded shapes to remove the excess copper. This liberates the molded rooster from the matrix. He now trims the rooster with a set of clippers to give it a cleaner edge. Using longer clippers, he snips copper from inside the beak. This opens it up. Once the ragged bits have been trimmed, he's ready to match the two sides of this weather vane rooster. He secures it in a vise and cleans the seam with a solution called flux. He tacks it with solder and then checks the evenness of the seam. When the two molds match perfectly, he solders the entire seam. This weather rooster is now ready for its tail. It will give the weather vane a larger surface on one side, offering greater resistance to the wind. This will cause the front of the weather vane to point into the wind. He inserts the weather vane axis through the rooster's foot into the cavity, and it emerges from the back of the neck. He pounds the top of the shaft flush to the surface, and then solders it in place for a permanent installation. For some extra pizzazz, he slides a decorative copper ball up the turning rod, resting it just below the rooster foot. He secures it with solder. He now cuts out the feathered end for an arrow. It's known as the fletching, and it will help balance the weather vane. He turns the crank of a press to roll numerous creases into the fletching. The creases mimic feather lines. He solders the feathered end to the pointed shaft. It has a hole for installing it onto the weather vane's turning rod. As the weather vane spins with the prevailing wind, the arrow will point in its direction. A waddle below the beak and a comb atop his head, and this rooster is ready to rule the roof. Exposure to the elements will weather the copper and give it a blue-green patina. For customers who don't want to wait a few years for this to happen, instant results can be achieved by applying a special acid. Depending on its complexity, a copper weather vane can take up to two days to build. With luck, it could last a century or more. Like the weather, predicting a weather vane's long-term viability is not an exact science.